Zustend, a new state manager on this blue collar coder. I'm Jack Harrington at Jahur on Twitter. React State has had kind of an interesting journey, right? You started with 0.13 and React Create class where you had state locally associated with a component, and that was fine. And then we moved to the flux pattern and its most popular implementation, which is Redux. And then state and components became an absolute no-no. Everything's got to go up into the big singleton data store up in the sky. And then now with hooks, we basically come back around to component state being just fine, but we're finding that in some cases that requires prop drilling or context management, and that gets too painful. So we need something that kind of fits in between those two. And so we've seen a bunch of new state managers come out. I've covered Recoil, which fits into this space before. There's a new implementation of that called Jotai, which has a smaller surface area and a lot, lot smaller size. There is Radioactive State, which is kind of a MobX light sort of thing as a hook. And then there's Zustend, which is what we're going to look at today. So we're going to go build out a simple Create React app that does a filterable Pokemon list. It kind of shows you all the sort of basic mechanics of state management using this system. Let's go jump into the code. So this is the site we're going to create. It's going to be a Create React app. Pretty simple. It's got a list of Pokemon and a search box at the top. Type in your search request, and it filters that down for you on the fly. So there's really two pieces of state here. There's the input text, and then there's the list of all the Pokemon. So the state manager we're going to use for this is Zustend. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, but it's pretty cool. So it's pretty simple. You can see at the top here, you import a create method, and that create method gives you back a hook, which is a really interesting pattern. So in this case, create gives you use store, and then you use it just the same way you normally would a hook. So let's use MPX create react app to create the app. Call it Zustend Pokemon. Now we'll CD into that directory and bring up VS Code. And then we'll start it up and we'll see that we get the regular Create React App spinning logo. So the next thing we want to do is add in Zustend. And then we'll restart the server. Now we'll go over to app.js and we can just remove a lot of this content. Don't need the logo and we don't need the HTML. And now we can go clean up a lot of the CSS. And we'll make app 800 pixels wide. Give it a margin auto that'll center it in the screen and a little bit of padding. Now we're going to import create from Zustend and use it to create our hook called useStore. So create takes a function. That function gets set. It also gets get if you want to do that. But in this case, all we need is set. The function should return an object. So we'll start off with our state values. In this case, filter is going to be a text string and Pokemon is going to be an array. Then we'll create a new function called setFilter which when given a filter does that set call. That set call in turn takes a state and returns a new state. And we'll use the spread operator to return the original state. And then the update of the filter, which will just set to the new value that's incoming. And we'll do the exact same thing for Pokemon to say set Pokemon. And then change out the filter to be Pokemon. And that's it, that's our store. So let's go and create our filter input component. It's not going to take any properties. It's just going to return an input. And the way it's gonna get the filter is by using that hook, use store. And it also takes a function. And that function gets given the state 
and it picks off the state element that it wants, in this case, the filter. Now we've got our filter value, so let's go and set value to that filter. And now we need an on change handler, so let's go first get set filter. We'll copy and paste that first line and replace filter with set filter. And that's going to give us back the method called set filter. And then in on change, we take the event, we call set filter, and then with the target value, which is the new value of the input. Let's jump on over to the app and add that component. And there it is. But we don't really know if it's working or not. So let's go and copy that filter hook invocation down into app. And then just show the value of filter down below. And now as we type, we can see we get the filter value. So that's working quite nicely. Okay, the next thing to do is go get the list of Pokemon. So where are we going to do that? Well, we've got a gist. And that's linked to in the description. And from there, I can click on raw, and that's going to bring up the raw data URL. So let's take that URL and define it as Pokemon URL. And we'll go down into app and we'll use a good old fashioned react use effect to call fetch on Pokemon URL. Then we'll take the response and get the JSON out of it. And now we've got Pokemon. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we need to call set Pokemon on that Pokemon, but we don't have it yet. So let's copy and paste set filter and then change set filter to set Pokemon. Now let's take a look at what we're getting out of Pokemon by JSON stringifying it and going and getting that value. All right, that looks really good. We know now that we've got an array full of the Pokemon. So let's get rid of that JSON stringify stuff. And now we're going to create a new component called Pokemon Table. And then we're going to add in that Pokemon Getter. And return a table with 100%, with a T body. And then we'll map through all those Pokemon. Getting the name, the ID, and the type. Creating a row with, for each ID and then columns for the English name and the type, as an, which is an array, so we're going to join that. And now let's go and add Pokemon table to the component. And that looks really good. Great. So one thing before we make this filter work, let's go and alter the input size. So go back into app.css, add an item for input, Make the font size extra large, add a little padding and some width. And now we'll bring back in filter in Pokemon table. And then we'll use that filter in an array filter, which the first thing it's going to take is the Pokemon. So we'll grab out the English name. Then we'll to lowercase that. and see if it includes filter, which we're also to lowercase. And now as we type, we can see that it automatically filters, which is great. Let's go and add an H1 so you can see what's being updated on every key press. It's intelligently only updating the stuff that is required to be updated during this. So you're not seeing mass updates, which is great. So this is really neat. So thus far, we've got a store, which we could go and add to an external file, maybe dot store, and then let everyone else consume that. And we've got multiple components, each of which is grabbing different parts of the store and only updating when those store parts change, which is exactly what we want. So one more thing we want to test when it comes to these kind of state managers. Can we update the state outside of the React tree? So we're going to do just that now. We're going to take that fetch and copy it. And then comment out all the existing code that does the use effect. 
And we'll just paste that right up above. So that's going to run when this app runs the first time. And now we don't have access to set Pokemon, so we need to change that to use store dot set state. And then it's the exact same thing as before. We give it a function, it takes a state. We then spread the state, add in the Pokemon, and it works just the same way. So you can set the state inside of React using the hook, or you can set it outside with just direct access to the store. It's very clean that way. One more thing would be the dev tooling. So there actually is dev tooling associated with this. It's called Simple Zustin Dev Tools. So I'll Google for that. There's a link to that in the description. Now here's the page that documents it with its awesome 16 weekly downloads. Let's go and import that. And let's add simple Zustin dev tools using Yarn. And then restart the server. Well, everything looks fine. Nothing's complaining yet. So let's use this. Now let's go down here and grab the invocation of that. Paste it in. And now when we look at the inspector, if we go over to components, and this is with React DevTools installed, now we can click on DevTool, and we see that we've got the current state. And I can type into the filter, and we can see that updating dynamically. So it's a nice way of also looking at your state. And if you have multiple stores, you can do that as well. So let's go take a look at the documentation one more time. Some really cool other little use cases in here. For example, you can have multiple stores simultaneously. You can do selector memoization, which is great. Describes how to do async actions. It's actually quite nice documentation when you get to this level. All right, well, I hope you've learned some cool stuff about Zustin and how it fits in that mid layer between component state and a much larger store. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those down in the comment section down below. Feel free to like and share this video with all your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already, please hit that bell button and you've been notified the next time a new one of these videos comes out. Of course, there's the blue color coder newsletter. There's a link to that in the description and it will get you access to these videos a day earlier than everyone else. All right, coming at you from the Oregon wildfires in this weird orange light. <laughs> Be happy, be healthy, and now more than ever, be safe.